I want to start by revisiting uh, a question which we looked at a couple of weeks ago and we debated. Do you remember? We were looking at whether maths was discovered or invented. Do you remember this? Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, I just want to come back to this question for two reasons. Number one, maybe you think we've answered this question already. Haven't we arrived at a conclusion to this? Uh, and if you think that, it's a natural thought, but I think you've missed the point. Uh, the reason why is because questions like this, right, they're not like a set of directions, like you go from here to here, and then you get to a destination, and you're finished. Questions like this, they're more like, um, they're more like lenses. They're like things that you look at the world through, and you examine different things, and you think, okay, now, how can I understand this in terms of this? And you look at something else, and you look at something else, and then you see what happens, right? So, um... The second reason why I wanted to revisit this question is because over the weekend, um, I went to a conference, uh, it was a maths conference. So there's like, I don't know, three or 400 maths teachers from all over the state. Uh, it was a lot of nerds in one room, it's a bit of a scary sort of thought. Um, but a couple of things that I did was I went and attended these sessions that looked at different kinds of maths and I was thinking about that over the weekend. And they said some very interesting things about this very idea and I'm like, did they know that our class was dealing with this? Like, they, they nailed it on the, on the head. So, two different ideas. Uh, firstly, how to, look at, um, how to look at these kinds of things. So, you can drop this down, right? Now, this, this is a cubic equation. Uh, more specifically, it's a general cubic equation for any values of A, B, C, and D. Okay? Now, cubic equations are very easy to write. And... They're not hard to understand. Like we've looked at cubic equations before. I could give you something that would expand out to a cubic equation. But cubic equations are actually very difficult to understand. The maths of cubic equations is super hard, right? Um, if I gave you this, this is a linear equation and it's super easy to solve. The solution is x equals negative three, right? No problem. Like you don't even need to do any work here. In the same way, something like this Take a little more mental effort, right? But you can solve this. Quadratic equations, we have well established the ways to work with these things, right? And um, so had ancient mathematicians, like the Greeks and all that kind of thing. They understood all of this. That was fine. But you just step up one more time. Step one, step two, and everything explodes. People were working on this for centuries. And what was really cool is, um, this is, I don't know if they should go back to this kind of idea, but, um, in the past, particularly like in the Renaissance era, if you were like a teacher or a professor or something like that, the way that you got a job was you didn't apply and then have an interview. The way that you got a job, if suppose, suppose Jack was the current head teacher of maths or something like that, you know, and I wanted to take his job, the way that I would do it is I would challenge Jack to a duel, right? I, I would write some questions. It would be a maths duel, right? I'd write some questions that I know how to solve and I'd give them to Jack and Jack would do the same, right? And we would see, you know, who would win. So it was kind of like, the more you know, like that's how you, it's, it, you fight it out and whoever can answer more questions is the winner, right? Now these kinds of questions appeared in these duels, these kind of tournaments, these matches, right? And it was kind of to your advantage, a bit like in a real fight, if like, if you know secret fighting techniques, right, that the other guy doesn't know, it's like, I know this like weird nerve pinch that I can do that will paralyze you or something, then you keep it to yourself, right? You find them out and then you're like, I'm going to keep this in my back pocket and I can whip it out when I need to and I can, you know, fend off any challenges, right? So the ways to solve these kinds of things, they were viewed kind of like, uh, and this is the word that the presenter used when we were talking about this, they were kind of like discoveries that you could make about different kinds of versions of these you could solve and how to solve them, right? And it was a bit like, like I said, it's like an arms race for who could solve them faster. So when you look at it from this point of view, it's a, it's a discovery thing. Now, then there was another session I went to, and he was talking a lot about Lewis Carroll. You remember this? Why were we looking at Lewis Carroll in the last few weeks? Carroll diagrams, which are an alternative to Venn diagrams. You remember that, right? So he didn't just write Alice in Wonderland. He did a lot of maths, okay? And one of the interesting things that I attended, uh, that I got in this session, was um, he said this sentence. I wonder what you think of this. In um, stark contrast to this guy, right? He, talking about Lewis Carroll and the maths that he did, this presenter said, maths is purely invention. Purely invention. And the way he justified it was this. I'll say it to you, maybe you want to write it down and have a think about it later. He said, think about the number three. I don't know why everyone picks three. Three is an important number, I guess. Think about the number three. 
Where does the number three exist? Where is the number three? Where can you point to and say, look, there's, that's three. That's what three is. Now, see this, that's interesting, right? So that's a symbol that came out of my brain, right? Like it's not a, it doesn't, it's, it's there because I wrote it there, right? Where is it in reality? And the answer is, well, it exists in human minds, right? Like that's where it comes from. It's an idea that we use and it's a symbol and all that kind of thing. But apart from that, it has no reality. You take humans away, you take three away, right? So that was his argument for why it was completely invented. I thought that was super interesting, okay? So, uh, you can rule that off. Now, here's um, this quote, which refers to something that we're going to cover today, which is on your handouts, don't quite turn them over yet. I'm gonna read it to you just so you can wrap your head around it, because it's, it's a very old quote, so the language is a bit hard, right? And I want you to try and think, as we go through this, what do you think this is referring to? What's the they that is the subject of this sentence, okay? So it says, uh, this guy, this guy, he was an English mathematician, Francis M, because I don't know how to pronounce his surname. He said, they, whatever they are, they darken the very whole doctrines of the equations and make dark of the things which are in their nature excessively obvious and simple. So, this guy, Francis, versus this idea, what does he think of this idea? Does he like it or does he dislike it? He dislikes it. A whole lot, right? He's like, this is a terrible idea. Whoever thought of this, this concept, right? It's just making everything confusing. We used to understand this stuff. It was obvious, it was simple. And since some guy came along and invented these, it's just confusing, okay? So I want you to think about, I wonder, I wonder what this is referring to.